So in this video we're going to develop the hull topology of the spaceship using this reference model as a base to work on. But before we can get started we need to organize the scene so it will help us during this process. So the first thing to do is to scale the spaceship. Now I don't actually know what the true dimensions of the spaceship are, they weren't included with the reference image. But we can base it around the size of a default human. Now if you go to your preset browser and navigate to the preset folder that comes with this video you should have a preset in there called pilot temp just double click on it to load it into the scene now this is just a roughed out seat and part of a model that comes in Modo's content directory but importantly I know that this is the correct scale and if we look at the spaceship you can see that the spaceship is a little bit big so if we go to the right hand view and then select the spaceship hold down control and select the reference, go to an item mode and also a wireframe view, go to origin action center, hit the R key and scale the spaceship. Now the reason why we're doing this in item mode is because we can scale the reference image at the same time. Now I found that you need to scale it to 64% and also you need to move it into position but when you're done drop the tool and then in item properties just freeze those transforms just to reset all of the channels. So when you're happy with the scale of the spaceship go back to a component mode and we can delete that pilot. So now we can split the spaceship up into logical sections that we can tackle individually. So I'll just go back to a shaded view. I'm going to right click and duplicate the spaceship. Go back to the first one, click and hold, I'm going to call it proxy and then in component mode I'm just going to hit shift tab. So that's our low poly stand-in if we need it but we're not going to need it at this point so we're going to hide it. Go to this layer and back to wireframe view and now we need to split it up so I'm going to lasso the left hand outrigger, control X to cut, go to a new mesh layer and control V to paste and I'll call that outrigger back to this layer, select the elements of the cockpit and double click, control X to cut, go to new layer, control V to paste and we'll name that cockpit. And finally back in this layer we don't need the other outrigger now so we'll select it and hit delete and we can call that layer body then shift select them and hit control G to group them and we can call that group geometry reference so with the scene set up like this we've got a lot of control over how we view our reference material so just like before we can control the visibility of our reference images and switch them all off if need be and in exactly the same way we can control our reference geometry so for example in this video we're not going to want to see the cockpit or the outrigger and if at any time we want to hide everything we can just hide the group so make sure you've just got the body visible in the viewport and save incremental So why are we starting with the details? Well, it's very simple. With a model like this, where you've got lots of curves intersecting each other, it's the details that will determine the overall mesh density. So we'll start with the intakes. So go to a front view, zoom into one of the intakes, we'll go to a new mesh layer, and we'll put that new mesh layer outside of the geometry reference group. So this intake is going to be made up of two horizontal holes. So the first thing to do is to define the shape of those holes. So go to the basic tab, on the pen tool, make sure make quads is turned off and we're going to draw out a polygon. So you should end up with a shape like that when you're finished and then hold down shift and create another polygon above it. So when you finish that one, it should look like that. So it's space bar. Now we just need to make sure that the edges of these shapes are horizontal. So I'm just going to select each pot, each edge, hit the R key, and just zero out the Y channel. 
Now above these two holes is another intake at the top. So with the same pen tool, create another polygon that defines that intake. So with those three polygons selected, hit the B key, click in the viewport and inset it slightly, only by about say seven millimeters. Drop the tool and then delete the polygons. Then go to a perspective view and you can see those polygons aren't anywhere near where they need to be. But if we go to snapping and run a background constraint with the geometry constraint set to vector, hit the W key and then just move those back on the Z and they'll stick on the geometry in the background. So now we can join these three pieces together because we want to create this section in its entirety. So start by hiding the background geometry and in edge mode select these six edges, go to duplicate and run the bridge tool, then bring back the geometry in the background. And what we want to do now is with the polygon pen tool and with make quads active we need just need to create polygons running right around this shape right to the edge so make sure the background constraint is set to off or the geometry constraint is set to off and I'll start up here click once twice right on the edge and the third time you click we'll create the quad but just make sure that these points are right on that edge Now when you get to this point here, you can just create a polygon in there and then in edge mode, select those three edges and hit the P key and go back to the polygon pen tool and carry on. And when you get to this point, it's obviously going to become two strips of polygons. So using roughly the same distance between polygons as you're using along there, bring a strip right down to the point. So I've come all the way around this section and when you get into here we need to continue these edges across onto that line and up to there. And finally across to there. So now we need to do exactly the same with this shape. And when you do it, try and maintain squares in each corner. So you want to try and avoid edges going straight into a corner like that. So in this case, I'm going to have a little square there, and then start coming up. So now we can join these two pieces together, but in order to do that, we're going to have to add some edges. Go on to Edge and run the Add Loop tool. I'm going to add an edge in there, hold down Shift, and add another edge in there, and then finally one more edge in there. So hide the reference geometry, go to edge mode, select those three edges, hold down shift and select those three edges, duplicate and run bridge but just with one segment. Now in defining that section we're giving ourselves a really good idea of how many polygons need to be created around this oval. So if you run a background constraint again with geometry constraint off, run a pen tool again and we'll bring a quad strip from this edge by the looks of it we need to have three in that gap we'll bring that right down to here and that's telling us how big the polygons need to be now so hold down shift and draw out a strip of polygons right around that oval. So just by defining that bit of detail we've now given ourselves a really good idea of how dense the final mesh is going to be. 
So let's move on to the next piece of detail and that's the cockpit. So let's just make it visible in the background geometry. Now the cockpit is quite interesting because we're going to want it to be able to open in the final model. Now in the design that happens by this back section sliding back and then this middle section hinging upwards. So we're going to be, have to create a shape in the fuselage that's going to allow that to happen. So with the background constraint on, on the polygon pen tool, start at the front of the cockpit and we'll just draw out a strip of polygons that defines the shape. And again, try and make the density of the polygons roughly the same as before. So when you get to this point, you need to bring the polygons straight back because we want to define a groove in which the cockpit can slide. So just carry on creating these polygons. Don't worry about it being perfectly straight at the moment because we can straighten that up at the end. So when you finish that, drop the tool and then in edge mode, we just select these edges, hit the R key and we'll zero it on the X and hit the W key and line it up. So now we can define the groove for the cockpit to slide back and also the hole for the cockpit itself. Start by defining where the back of that hole is going to be. So I'm going to go to edge mode, select this edge, move it to about there. So that's going to be the back of the hole. Then if we hide all the background geometry and in edge mode just select all of these edges. Hit the Z key, click in the viewport, bring it down, and then at the point where you, you could define that edge, we'll select those edges, hit the Z key again, click in the viewport, and we want to zero those on the X. So I've got a vertex set position zero on the X. Now one interesting detail is as this cockpit slides back this arc at the back is going to cut into this polygon back here. So we need to create a hole at the bottom. Now to find out how big that hole should be we'll go to the cockpit layer, go to item mode, hit the Y key for the transform tool and bring it back on the Z by about 1.2 meters and you can see where it's crossing in. So then go back to the mesh layer, go to a polygon mode and with the background constraint and also the pen tool we can define this hole so there, there and then there. Don't put it right up close because you want there to be a gap around it. So there and finally there. So then go back to the cockpit layer and zero out the Z positional channel and that will bring the cockpit forward. Then go back into this layer and hide the reference geometry. So now we just need to fill this gap. So go to edges and the add loop tool. We'll put an edge in there. Select those two edges, duplicate and bridge. Then select those edges, hit the Z key click in the viewport, move it back on the Z, then hit the R key and zero it on the Z to flatten it off, then hit the P key to create a polygon, and then just, just to make sure everything remains as quads, we can go to Mesh Edit, Edge Slice, and we'll just put a couple of edges in there. Now if we go to the top view, you can see we have this hatch on the top of this middle section. Now I really, I really like this venting that's behind it, so what I want to do is continue that venting down the front and also down the back. But we don't have to do that yet. All we need to do is all we need to do is to define where that area is. So what I'm going to do with the background constraint and the pen tool is just bring a strip of polygons up here. then all the way across here, all the way down the back and then across to the middle. 
So when you've done that, you'll just want to straighten some of these edges up. So I'll select those, hit the R key, and zero it on the X. And we can do the same with that one. So those polygons are just defining where the hatch and venting is going to be. The actual hatch and venting is going to be a separate piece of geometry that's going to sit in that space. So next we can do this bump on the nose of the fuselage and we'll start by bringing a strip of polygons from the cockpit area to the bump. Then hold down shift and we'll bring a strip all the way around the edge of the shape. So when you've done that, draw out another strip, but this time actually on the shape, and take that all the way around. So then create another strip above that, but this time when you get to the, the end here, instead of bringing the polygons round to the center line, just terminate them there. So to finish off we'll bring one more strip along the center line. But we're not going to take it right to the end. We want to terminate this round about here. So take a polygon to there and just leave it so that eventually when this is mirrored over to the other side it'll leave room for a quad polygon in there. So for the gun pod area we need to use exactly the same technique. So again, draw out a strip right around the shape. And when you're doing this, use the polygons that you defined on the top of the fuselage as a guide, because eventually these need to be joined together. So draw a second row of polygons actually on the shape, and then to complete it, bring a strip down the middle to there, and then take that across, hold down shift, and fill the gap. So when you've created that gun area, we now need to create a mirrored and inverted version of it in front of it, which will allow for enough room for a gun to be placed in there. So hit Control c Control v to copy and paste that geometry. Hit the E key and change the action center to selection and flip it over 180 degrees. Hit the W key, move it forward in front of that piece. Hit the F key and I'm just going to select the polygons around the edge. I'm going to run a background constraint with the geometry constraint set to vector, hit the W key, and we'll move that back so they stick to the background geometry. Get rid of the background constraint and then select this area, hit the W key with a selection action center, and then we'll just move that back. Now to help you, just hide the background geometry. And as we move that back, it will reveal the shape that we need. So just to finish this off, go to edge mode, we'll select those two edges, go to edges and join average, do the same at the top, and double click on that edge loop, hit the R key and zero it on the Z just to straighten everything up, then hit the Z key, click in the viewport, hit the R key and scale it in. And when you hit the tab key, we're beginning to get a nice hole there for a, some kind of machine gun, some kind of space age machine gun. So those are what I think are the main areas of detail in this model. You could, of course, add a lot more if you wanted to. But the reason why we've defined these is it's now going to be a lot easier to control the topology for the rest of the model, because the topology is going to radiate out from these areas. 
So we've defined most of the details that sit within the lines of the object, but we haven't defined the lines themselves, and that's what we're going to do next. But because we've got the detail defined, we can use that as a guide to actually creating these lines. So I'm going to start with probably the most prominent line of the model, and that's this line running past the cockpit and down to the nose. So I'm going to start by the gun. So I'm going to run a background constraint, geometry constraint off, and then use polygon pen tool with make quads active. And we'll start here up to the edge and run a strip of polygons all the way down. When you get to that point they'll come away. Now use a strip of polygons around the cockpit to determine where these polygons should go because we want to join them up eventually. So when you get to the intake, just join them up like that. And then we can come to the front, hold down shift, and start working towards the nose. And when you get to the nose, just bring it around like that. If you drop the tool and then hit the T key for element move, what we can do is even up these polygons. So just bring these points up just to straighten that line. Because we don't actually need two edges defining that edge, or the edge of the gun. So the next line to define is a line running at the base of the side pod and around into this corner and then pass the intake and to the nose. So again, the polygon pen tool will start at the intake again using the polygons at the top as a guide bring the strip along. So when you get to this point begin to tighten the polygons up going around this corner and then we need to bring them to a point under here so take it to there, hold down shift point there, a point right in the corner point there and then snap that point to that one and then come along this line and then when you get to here you can break it off and then bring this edge right along to the nose so when we get to this point we just want to add some polygons in here around this intake because this is quite a tight piece of geometry coming into a much broader piece of geometry. I want to try and help that transition happen. So I'm going to come round to the front of it like that. And hold down shift there and there and then carry on up towards the nose and when you get to the nose like we did before just bring it around to the center line and again matching the polygons at the top and drop the tool hit the T key and then go along and even everything up so the next line to define is around this intake. So it just needs to be a thin strip. But again, think about the length in relation to the other polygons. So when you get to the center line, we now need to bring a row of polygons right down the length 
of the fuselage. Don't stop at that point, carry on all the way around. I'm going to join it up to this polygon here. So when you get to this point, we need to help the topology around this point. So I'm going to hold down shift to there and we'll bring a polygon around like that. Down shift again and we'll begin to define that edge, then hold down shift and start to bring this around to the back. So I've brought that all the way around to there and joined it to that polygon at the back. Now similarly we can do the same with the nose. Just need to define that center line. To that. Now we're not going to know exactly how many polygons we're going to need on this nose. So just put enough in there to define the shape. Put on shift again. And bring it back. When you get to this point, you just want to join these things together. So we'll bring that across and to there. So now we can define the outside edge of the side pod. So we'll just bring a strip from here. And we'll want to bring that all the way around until we hit this polygon in the middle here. So when you've done that, hit the T key for element move and we just need to line everything up. Now one quick tip here is if you set the background visibility to flat shade, you'll get a faceted view of the reference geometry and that will show you the subdivision in the polygons in the background. And those lines are really useful for lining things up. So next we can define the line running from this point all the way around to the back of the intake. So again, polygon pen tool. all the way around. So when I get to the end I think I'm going to need another edge in here before I join it. So drop the tool, go to edge and add loop. Add a loop in there. Go to edge mode and select those two edges, duplicate and bridge. And in polygon mode just double click on everything to select it so you can see it. So now we need to bring another row of polygons just to complete this edge here. But when we get to this point, we can break it off and bring it all the way around the back of the engine pod. So run the polygon pen tool again. And keep going. So when you've brought those polygons all the way around, it now tells you how many polygons need to be across this flat section. So run add loop. Put an edge there, hold down shift, an edge there, hold down shift, put an edge there, polygon pen tool again, and then we can just fill that gap down to there. Now this intake at the top is also flat, so there's no need to map that out polygon by polygon. So hide the reference geometry, go to edge mode, select the edges I want to extend, hit the Z key, Click in the viewport and move it back on the Z, so it lines up with there. Hit the R key, zero out the Z channel, and I want to line it up with this edge here. And that tells me that I need one, two, three, four edges in this section. So in polygon mode, select two polygons, Alt C, have the count on four, mode on uniform and click in the viewport. So I've brought the reference geometry back. Now looking at the model 
I can tell that this corner here is going to cause a real problem when it's subdivided. You've got so many planes intersecting each other that it's going to cause a real pinch. So we've got to try and negate that as much as possible. So to do that, I'm going to hit the T key for element move. I'm going to make sure that this line comes back as straight as possible. And then I'll start to curve it down here. So I'm going to ignore the line on the reference geometry. And I'll try and bring that down like that. And then just even up those polygons so it's a nice smooth transition. So you can see by doing that we now have to alter the profile of this curve. But we'll start just by filling the gap with the polygon pen tool. So when you've done that, drop the tool and hit escape to get rid of the background constraint. And then hit the T key for element move and we just need to move these points up. And just redefine that profile. So when you've done that, drop that tool, bring back the background constraint and the polygon pen tool and now we can define this awkward little corner in here. Put a polygon in there like that and then we need to come around like that and put a polygon in there. Hold down shift and now we need to come around this engine. So now we can define the back of this piece. So with the polygon pen tool, we now need to create two strips of polygons that define this corner. So when you've done that one, hold down shift, bring this one up and then break it off so we can come around. Now you need to bring this edge all the way down. So when you come through here, join it up to the piece going around the engine. And then bring it down to here. And then we want to come around this section at the back. And then up the other side. So next we can do these fins. Now, like the side pods, because they're straight, we don't need to use the background constraint. So I'm going to remove that. Let's just remove the background geometry. And I'll just select those two edges. Let's bring back the the geometry. I'm going to hit the Z key for edge extend and I'm going to move it into place. Now I know, know that it needs to be roughly six segments in here. So I'll type in six and then just place that where it needs to be. Then hold down shift and click and bring that all the way back here. And I'm going to put about 10 in there. That might be too many, but I can always remove them. Shift click again, and I can come down. To there. Let's have 8 in there. Shift click again. Let's hide the reference geometry and it's going to go to drag weld and I'm just going to weld those points into position. 
So we've only got two more lines to define. Firstly, the base of the side pod. So we can start from here. Bring that all the way around to this polygon here. And finally, this edge running along the intake. So when you've done that, that's all of the major lines of the design defined. Now all we've got to do is fill in the gaps. So when it comes to filling in the gaps between the lines, we're going to start with the top of the fuselage. So with a background constraint and the polygon pen tool, I'm going to draw out a strip of quads. And when we get to here, I'm going to join it to that point there. So drop the tool, hide the background geometry, go to Edge, and I'm going to run Add Loop, put an extra edge in there, and I'll go to a wireframe view and run Drag Weld. I can just join those two points. If I go to the other end, go to Vertices Mode, and select those four points, and then hit the P key to create a quad. So with that piece filled in, it's now a simple process of bridging the gap. So in edge mode, select those two edges and hit the up arrow to expand the selection until it comes all the way around to the other side. So when it reaches that point, come right to the nose, hold down control and deselect that edge. Then go to duplicate bridge and just with one segment, click in the viewport. So the next section is this piece above the side pod. So in edge mode, select all of those edges, then turn the geometry constraint to screen axis and move the model in the viewport so you're looking straight at the section you want to fill. Then hit the Z key for edge extend, drag down, hold down shift, click again and drag down again. And with the geometry constraint set to screen axis, the new polygons that you've created will have stuck to the surface. So now we just need to weld the endpoints. So we'll go to drag weld, join that to that, that one to that one, and on this side, that one to there. Now you may need to go to a wireframe view and weld that point to there. So then select all of the edges on either side of the gap that's remaining and run the bridge tool. So then select these edges on the top of the side pod and again with the geometry constraint set to screen axis. Line the geometry up in the viewport, hit the Z key, and click and drag in the viewport to pull out a small strip. So hide the background geometry, and again, we'll use drag weld. Now if we come to this side, there isn't an edge to join to, so we'll run add loop, put an edge in there, and then run drag weld. Then select all the edges on the other side of the side pod and do the same thing. Now before you fill this gap you need to make sure that you've got the same number of edges on either side and I haven't, I've actually got one more edge on this side. So in edge mode I'm just going to double click on those two edges and hit backspace to remove them. Then double click to select the whole edge loop, hold down control and deselect those two edges at the front and that edge at the back. Then run the bridge tool with two segments and make sure the mode is on linear and click in the viewport. And then we can go in, double click on the edge loop, hit the P key to create a polygon come over to this side, run add loop, and then make sure that these, those two vertices are joined. I'm just going to use join average. So next we can tackle this section around this point. So with the background constraint and the polygon pen tool, we just want to draw a strip of polygons right around the point. And when you get to there, create a quad like that then hold down shift and bring it all the way down the other side and then 
bring it into there. Then, hold down shift again. Bring it to about there. And then break it off. Go all the way around to the front. So when you get to the front, join it. Hold down shift. Bring two out and then start to break it off. Now you can see there when you're going to need to remove an edge. But you can do that in a minute. And just carry on going all the way to the back. Now when you get to this point, you'll see that we've actually got twice as many edges along here as we have at the top. So in order to join them up, we're going to have to go to edge mode, double click on those edges and hit backspace, then select those edges, duplicate bridge, and with one segment, click in the viewport, then double click on there and hit the P key. Now this triangle in the corner isn't very satisfactory, that's going to cause a bump on the surface. So to fix it, run edge slice, and bring an edge down there, then select that edge and hit backspace to remove it. But then select those two edges, bring back your background geometry, and we need to make sure that that's resting on the surface. So let's change the geometry constraint to vector, hit the W key, and move it down. Now because we removed some edges at the top, we're going to have to remove some edges at the bottom so everything will match up. So select these edges and hit backspace to remove them. So then select these edges on the bridge tool with one segment and double click on that edge loop and hit P to fill the gap. Now I'm going to have to have a slight rethink here because these polygons on either side of this point are very large in comparison to all the others. And because they're on a curved surface, when I hit shift tab, they actually create flat spots on that surface which are going to be very noticeable. So what I'm going to do is backtrack on what I did here. So I'll go back to Edge Slice, put that edge in, and double click on that edge, hit Backspace to remove it. And then I'm going to simply run the Add Loop tool, put an edge in there, hold down Shift, and put an edge in there. Now importantly, those aren't going to be attached to the surface now. So let's just move them out, bring back the background geometry. Let's have a background constraint with geometry set to vector. Hit the W key and just move them back to stick them on the surface. So then with the polygon pen tool we just need to fill this gap. And when you get to there, stop, hold down shift and go all the way back. Down shift again. All the way to there. Hold down shift and then finally fill in the rest of it. So now we just need to fill this gap. Now remember we have one edge too many here. So to get rid of that, select those two edges, go to edge and run join average. Then double click on that edge loop and hit backspace. And go to vert mode. Select those four points, hit the P key, go to edge mode, select those that edge loop and hit the P key again. Now the problem with that solution is we now have a point which shares six edges. And that's a really bad thing to have, particularly in an area like this. It will cause all sorts of nasty distortion. So we're just going to have to bite the bullet and add some more geometry. So run edge slice and we'll bring an edge through here. Hold down shift and bring an edge through there. Drop the tool, then select those two edges and hit backspace to remove them. Then run edge slice again. Bring an edge from there to there and to there. Then select that edge and remove that. Now because we've messed around with this surface, some of the points won't be sitting on the background geometry correctly. So bring the background geometry back. Hit the T key for element move and just go through and make sure that those points are in the correct place. 
So for the bottom of the side pod, like we did before, we're going to start by creating a row of polygons around the edge. And also at the back, before I do that, I'm just going to add a loop in there. And with my background constraint set to screen axis, select the edges on the outside of the side pod, hit the Z key and extend them twice. Now we need to create two rows of polygons going right across. So I've just used the add loop tool to make sure that I've got the same number of edges on either side of that hole. Go to edge mode, double click on that edge loop deselect the end edges, duplicate bridge, two segments, and put the mode on linear, and click in the viewport. And then we just want to join the points at the end. So for the engine pod, I'm going to start by creating two strips that will fill in the gap between the oval in the middle and the outside edge. Now I'll notice when I've created the second strip, that I left a gap there and also a gap here. And when you bring this to the edge, I'm just going to join it to here and then double click on that edge and hit backspace to remove it. So now we've got two sections left. So I'll start by putting a row of polygons right around the edge of this shape. And when I get into here, create a polygon like that down shift and bring it back around to there. So I don't think I need this edge split here so I'm going to go to vert mode, select those two points go to vertex and join average. Go back to polygon mode and run the polygon pen tool and I'm just going to draw a strip of quads that block in that whole area. So now I've just got two edges that I can easily terminate in a quad polygon in this at this point here. Before I can do that I need to make sure I've got enough edges on either side. Now if you notice I've got one, two, three there and one, two, three, four, five down here so I need to remove two edges underneath. So go to edge mode and hide the background, background geometry. Double click on that edge, backspace to remove it and then probably need to get rid of this edge here. So select those edges, hit backspace, double click on that, I hit backspace as well and I'm still leaving a quad in there. Now one thing you can do just to even, even things out, because we've got gaps now, is double click on that edge and with a background constraint run edge slide and we can just slide that through and it'll remain fixed to the background geometry and it just evens things up. So now we can just go through to there and to there, hold down shift and then complete it like that. So for this section again I think we can join these two points and then if we run the polygon pen tool bring two polys like that and then in here We can create a polygon like that. And now we've got one, two, three edges and three edges here. So I'll down shift and fill it in. So this back section is fairly straightforward. We just need to start by bringing some polygons around from corner to corner. And shift and bring a strip up to the top. Now there's no edge to join that to yet. We can sort that out in a minute. So hold down shift again and bring a strip across like that. Hold down shift again. Bring a strip up to there. And then we 
click on that point that will fill that gap. Now in here we're going to need one, two, three polygons which means adding some edges. So I'm going to hide the background geometry. I'm going to run add loop. So I need an edge in there. Hold down shift, add an edge in there, hold down shift and add an edge in there. Bring back the background geometry. Let's drag weld those two points together. Polygon pen tool again. And fill that gap. And then if you hit the T key, you just need to move these points up. So this is following the curve of that engine. So next we can do this fin, and this is a lot more straightforward because it's flat. We'll start with this side, and luckily we've got six edges here, and six edges there. So just select them, duplicate and bridge. I'm going to have two segments, and with the mode on linear, and click in a viewport. For a large area like this that's flat, what I like to do is double click on the edge loop, hit the P key to create a polygon. Now if you don't see anything, go to polygon mode, and the polygon's actually the wrong way around here. So just hit the F key twice, that flips it around. Then you go to mesh edit, edge slice, and then you just break it up depending on the edges around the side of it. So as you can bring some edges across here, this one needs to go through the middle. There. This one can come through all of them to there. And then these two to come right around. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back here. So double click, hit the P key. Select this edge here, hit the W key for the move tool. I'm just going to bring that down to give me a little bit more room in there. Then again, with edge slice, we can start dicing this up. So when we get to there, we're going to need to bring an edge across. over there. Continue bringing this up. We need to kind of bring this around because this, this is actually curved. See we've got an extra edge in there. So we're going to go to vert mode, remove that point by hitting backspace, go to edge mode, select that edge and hit backspace. And now I should be able to do this. So I'll find shift and then we'll come up through there. Hold down shift and go to there. So again on this side we need to bridge the gap so we need to make sure we've got the same number of edges we've actually got one more than we need so I'm going to select that and hit backspace. So then we need six edges on that side and six edges on that side but importantly you must have two edges unselected at the end of that fin. That'll just support the polygons that are coming around from the back. So I just run the bridge tool and with one segment click in the viewport. Like we did before, select that edge loop, hit the P key, run edge slice, and start to dice it up. So when you finish, you should have a mesh that looks something like that. Now, when you're doing it, don't be afraid to add extra edge loops in areas like this if you need them.
So I've spent some time straightening these edges at the back of the fin and it's revealed a problem. And the problem is this corner here. I really don't like the way those edges are organized. Firstly, we've got an end on sitting right there. But mainly, you know, not, these edges aren't really defining the shape and that's going to cause a problem when we subdivide the object. So I'm going to run edge slice again and I'm going to bring an edge up here. it around like that. Drop the tool and I'm going to select that edge and hit backspace and also hit backspace on that one and then bring this edge all the way down to that triangle and now I can bring that across to there. Now we all have, we have all quads and it's defining that shape much more accurately. So then we can just continue this edge across here and we can terminate it there. So for this section we need to select these three edges, hit the Z key, uh, move it back on the X and then weld the endpoints and then just double click on the edge loop, hit the P key and like before just start dicing it up. So when you finish that you should have a mesh that looks something like this and again don't be afraid to add extra loops if you need them. So we've just come around to the intakes. There's a few things we need to do here. For example, we've got these very large polygons across the engine pod. We need to dice that up a little bit just to even things out. So select two polygons, Alt-C for loop slice, mode on uniform and account on three. Click in the viewport, drop the tool and then do the same across here. And one final thing is we've got this little loop of polygons running around each intake. Now that was there initially just to help us with the modeling process, to help us start the modeling. We don't actually need it now. So I'm going to select those and hit delete. For the underside of the engine pod, select four edges on either side and run the bridge tool with six segments. So for this back section, we'll start by selecting those edges, deselecting the end edge and running bridge with one segment. Then we need another edge in here. So run add loop. We'll put an edge in there. And then select those edges, deselect the end edge, duplicate and bridge again. Now on this side we've got a problem because we need to bridge across this section but we haven't got enough edges on this side. So I'm just going to double click that edge loop, hit the B key and bevel it. So now we can bridge across there and then across here. Now when you do something like that make sure you bring back the reference geometry, run a background constraint and element move and just fix these edges so that curve around that oval shape remains smooth. Now this hole here is very tricky because it's very difficult to fill that without causing distortion on the surface. So what we're going to have to do is add a couple of edge loops. So on the add loop tool, we'll put an edge loop in there, hold down shift, put an edge loop in there. Then select the geometry and bring back the geometry reference. Run a background constraint. And with element move, I'm just going to make sure that those edges are sitting on the surface. Then I'll run the pen tool. And I'll bring some polys across there. Hold down shift. Polys across there and finally fill that correct gap with another polygon. So for this section underneath, I'm going to start by selecting these eight edges at the top, hitting the Z key and extending them down, then run drag weld and weld the points. Take that point to there, then drop drag weld, just run element move, which is T, and we'll bring these over and run drag weld again. We'll 
join that point to there. Now we need to add some edge, loop, edge loops. So on the add loop tool, we'll put a loop in there. And if we run edge slice, we can put another edge in there. So now if we bring back our reference geometry, run a background constraint, and the polygon pen tool, we can fill this hole. And we just need to hit the T key for element move and just move these points around so everything's nice and even. So before we move on to the rest of the fuselage, there are a few things we need to add. So for example, we need to extend this oval shape into the fuselage. Don't, don't push it in too far. And then if we select the top intake, hit the Z key, we'll bring it back once, shift click, and again, and again zero it on the Z to flatten it off. And then for these two intakes, select the edge, hit the Z key, and again, back on the Z, shift click, and bring it back again. Now just take it till you just get to that oval. And finally, there's the engine outlet. So select the edge loop, bring back the geometry reference, hit the Z key, click in the viewport, bring it out, then with a background constraint and the T key, just move those points into place. And then hit the Z key again, click in the viewport, again with a background constraint and element move position these points right on the edge and then when you finish that hide the reference geometry hit the Z key again click in the viewport then hit the R key and scale it on all three axes but only by about 97% something like that Hit the Z key again, click in the viewport, and move it back, and then zero it out on the Z. So for the nose, we're going to start by taking these two edges at the front of the gun, and terminating them there and take two edges from here and terminate those along the side of the gun then take two edges from this side and terminate those in a similar position but on the bottom so then you should be left with three edges on that side and three edges right on the nose so as long as you've got the same number of edges on both sides it's just a question of filling the gap so on the underside of the nose a row of polygons to there and then another row to there and terminate those at that point. So I've moved some points around a little bit and I can see that I'm going to need an extra edge for this to work. So I'm going to add a loop, add a loop in there and then with the polygon pen tool just fill the gap. Now the side of this intake is actually quite awkward to do, so we'll start by just bringing a row of polygons around the intake. That will just help to shore that part of the object up. 
So then we can bring a row of polygons through here. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen at this point yet. And then we'll block this in. Take that down to about there. And then we'll break that off. Let's start to bring it back. And then we could terminate it there. So now we've got two edges here, but only one edge there. So I'm going to add an edge loop into that. And with the pen tool, draw out a strip of polygons coming from the center line. So when you've done that you'll be able to immediately see how many edges you need to add in so everything will join up. So with the add loop tool just go through and add in as many edges as you need. So when you've done that you can hide your reference geometry, go to edge mode, double click on that edge loop, deselect the two end edges and run bridge with one segment. So for the inside of this intake we've already got the topology that we need constructed so I'm just going to select those polygons, Control c to copy, go to a new mesh layer and Control v to paste, then hit F to flip the polygons, just move them back on the X, hit the R key, scale them down, then Control x again, back into that layer Control V to paste, bring back your background geometry, and now if you're on a background constraint, just hit the T key and you can line everything up. So when you've done that, run drag weld, and just weld this point at the end, then select all the edges on either side of that gap and bridge them. So now we can just use the Polygon Pen tool to fill in this gap. So when you've filled that gap in in the intake, just one final thing we need to do. With this hole where the gun's going to be, we want this section here to go straight back into the hole, whereas we need a, a little edge, a little bit of thickness on this side. So to achieve that, I'm just going to select these two polygons and delete them. I'm going to run the drag weld tool and I'll just weld those two endpoints. Go to edge mode, double click on the edge loop, hit the Z key and extend that edge backwards a couple of times. So then select all the edges on the center line of the model, go to vertex, set position 0 on the X, then go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror on the X. So the last things to do in this section are to fill in these two holes just by selecting the edge loop and hitting the P key. And then finally we just need to sort this intake out though because I want that to kind of come up and into the fuselage. So hit the Z key, put it back and up, shift click, move it up a bit more and maybe scale it, just get rid of that origin action center. And just keep going. So we now have a smooth continuous mesh that defines the fuselage of this spaceship. But if we hit the tab key to turn it to a subdivision surface and hide the wireframe, you can see the surfaces are nice and smooth, but all of those lines that we defined are very soft. So what we're going to do, instead of using a sub D, we're going to use a P sub. And then we're going to weight those edges just to sharpen everything up. So to turn the model into a P sub, I'm going to hit Shift Tab, and then I'm going to set the subdivision level, and I'm going to set it to 4. And that just ensures that I've got enough polygons in the surface to get a really nice tight edge 
to all of these lines. So I'm going to start by selecting all of the edges around the guns and this bump on the top of the fuselage. Go to Vertex Map, Edge Weight Tool and apply 30% weight and you'll see everything sharpen up. And if we hide the wireframe, you can see how nicely defined those areas are now. Select all of these edges around the cockpit and weight those. Now if you find that an area is not quite as well defined as you'd like, for example this area at the back here, you can see how these curves are quite blurred, then you just need to add in a little bit of extra geometry. So what I'm going to do here is run the add loop tool and put an edge in right there. You can see how that's sharpened everything up. So next select all the edges running around the side pods and the intake and apply weight to those. So then select all of the edges around the engines and weight those. Now obviously a lot of this is going to be trial and error so don't be afraid to work in small areas at a time. So just weight a few edges, if it, see if it works, if it doesn't undo it, change the selection and try again. It's a very experimental process. Now some of the problems that you might run into are in areas like this where it it's very sharp. You can see how that geometry is actually crossing over. So to fix that, just select the edges that radiate from that point and weight those. And that will fix it. And you might get a similar problem over here where the geometry is kind of folding over that corner. Again, just select the edge that radiates from that point and weight it. So then select the edges around the oval and also the engine outlet and weight those. Now you can also use fall-offs to apply weight so you can get a line to gradually fade away. For example here I need this line to be the same weight as this edge here and gradually fall off to the back. So I'm going to run a linear fall-off from the back to the front of that selection, then go to Vertex Map, Edge Weight Tool, apply 30% weight, and if I remove the fall off on the selection, go back to a perspective view, you can see how that edge gradually tapers away to nothing. And we need to do the same with this edge running all the way along the length of the fuselage, but we only need the fall off to occur around the gun area. So apply the weight. If I remove the fall off on the edge, you can see how that edge tapers away beautifully. So in this video we've used a four-stage modeling process that you can apply to almost any hard surface object. So we define the details, we define the lines, we fill in the gaps between them, and then we weight the edges. What's nice about this process is it gives you control over the surface you're trying to create and a freedom to experiment with topology without getting yourself tied up in knots. But most importantly it results in good surface continuity which is crucial because it is this above all else that determines the quality of a hard surface model.